Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast presented by Game Day Tailgate Experience. Elevate your tailgate when the Steelers travel down to Jacksonville to face the Jaguars. Now a 1 o'clock kickoff with the tailgate party. All you can eat in open bar starting at 1 o'clock. More details for that can be found at steelcityunderground.com slash Jaguars tailgate. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the middle of this show, including a promo code to save you a couple bucks off of that ticket. Um, I mentioned my name's Joe Kuzma, but we know that it's time to preview the Steelers' next game, which can only mean one thing. It's time for Trey's Corner with Pittsburgh Steelers cornerback Trey Johnson. Hey, Trey, how's it going? I'm doing good, man. Six feet above ground is always better than six feet below. <laughs> wow, man. That's that's deep. That's deeper than like when I say it's like, well, you know what? I'm doing miserable, but no one really cares. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's pretty deep, too, I guess. Um, so, uh, we talked to you recently, so I doubt there's too much progress update when it comes to your rehab. Anything that stands out over the last couple of days uh, at all? Uh no, not really. Just still working on strength, you know, just getting uh, the strengthening up, making sure it's just getting better every day. That's really the only thing that we're focusing on. You know, got to got to take the little feats, you know, the little things I'm starting to do in my everyday life are starting to get better. So I like that. Yeah, little milestones, little goals. That's always good to hear. We'll probably have even more after kind of the mini buy since the Steelers are on a short week here with Thursday night football. They're going to host the Carolina Panthers, uh, the six and two Carolina Panthers, who have been on a roll. I uh, believe winners of four of their last five. Actually, the same as the Steelers, though. The Steelers have won four in a row and stand at 5-2-1. and one. But the Steelers, uh, they're strong on Thursdays, um, especially at home, 7-2 and two on games played on Thursdays. They're breaking out the color rush jerseys this week. But uh, there's a whole lot of storylines here, actually. The Steelers have won the past five. They're the leaders of this series. Of course, Carolina hasn't been around for all that long. Uh, you know, you're younger than me, Trey. You may not remember Carolina being a uh, franchise team back in the mid '90s, but that was a big deal to me, man. I mean, we had Madden on the Super Nintendo, and they, you could make your own rosters and stuff with them. Jacksonville too, so it was kind of cool back in the day. But uh, they're the real deal now, and uh, they just came away with a somewhat impressive 42 to 28 win over Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who almost came back. They had solid control of that game. A lot of parallels between the two teams because um, you'll see that basically defensively and offensively, they, they look very similar in the way that they're structured. Um, what are your initial thoughts on uh, the Panthers and the Steelers? No, I feel like it's going to be a, a really good game. I feel like the Panthers are definitely on a roll. You know, they're not an easy team to beat, and I feel like Cam is playing some of his best football. I remember – I was watching Sports Center the other day, and they were saying how this year, this year Cam Newton's statistics are are similar to the year that they that they went to the Super Bowl and he had that that MVP year. So um, Cam is definitely playing great. You know, he's not going to be easy to stop. But you know, our job isn't to completely shut him down. We just got to contain him and just you know make him not not make as many plays as, as you know he he could. You know, your job really isn't to stop these elite athletes. You just got to slow him down and and contain him. Yeah, Cam is having a very good year. In fact, uh, when I this is the one that jumped off the page at me, sixty-seven point three completion percentage this year. Yeah, um, I, I believe that is his best because I know he struggled in years past. Uh, you know, low sixties. Uh, you know, all depending. I'm looking at some of this from the, these games. Geez, even some over a couple games over seventy and seventy-six percent completed against uh, Tampa Bay. Not a very good defense. Uh, all together, but yeah, I mean, there was um, he's been playing in the league, let me see here, since 2011, and I pull it up, and I mean, uh, 59.1 last year, 52.9 the year before, and you know, when he when he had the Superman kind of year, the MVP type season, he was also running a lot for uh, mm-hmm. touchdowns. He's doing all of that now because they have Norv Turner there as an offensive coordinator, and it seems. 
it seems like their offense is a lot more balanced. They also have Christian McCaffrey, a second-year running back, much like James Conner, albeit drafted higher, a multi-purpose weapon who catches a lot of balls out of the backfield. What do you think is the key to maybe slowing down? Well, let's start with Christian McCaffrey, and we could jump back to Cam. Um, I feel like with Christian McCaffrey, he's a – a, like he's one of those players where he, he can line up anywhere. You know, they also put him in the slot. You know, he can, obviously he comes out of the backfield catching the ball, and then and then you got to worry about him running inside the tackles. You know, so I think with him, you just got to make sure you get hits on him. Like anytime, anytime we get the opportunity to hit him, I feel like we need to kind of take that opportunity and make sure that we're wrapping up. You know, we're just not out there just throwing a shoulder trying to trying to lay the boom. You know, we need to make sure we're doing. You know, nice form tackling, you know, gator tackling, making sure we're wrapping everything up because, you know, he he is a really slippery running back. You know, he he's he's liable to just kind of make that one move and then all of a sudden he's gone. You know, so we just got to make sure that, you know, everybody's doing their job. Everybody knows their job, first of all, and then everybody's doing their job. And I feel like if all 11 players, you know, work together every play, you know, we really don't have anything to worry about. Yeah, and the odd thing with uh, Christian McCaffrey is he's only had like one game over 100 yards rushing, actually only one over 80 yards rushing. So he's kind of a a multi-purpose player from scrimmage, catching a lot of passes in the passing game. What's odd is is that you take the Steelers, who are fourth in average pass yards a game offensively in the league, and Carolina's 22nd. Let's flip that around. Carolina is rushing-wise second to the Steelers' 22nd. <laughs> so uh, the Steelers mm-hmm. more of a passing team than Carolina. They're getting it done on the ground. We talked about Lamar Jackson uh, last week and you hit the nail on the head almost prophetically, man. Like you had a crystal ball sitting there with you. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's where Joe Flacco is still on the field. It isn't quite the same way with Cam Newton. How do you prepare for such a such a mobile quarterback with Cam Newton? Uh, my opinion of Cam Newton is it's like he's He's kind of like Ben Roethlisberger in a lot of ways, just a big guy that's hard to bring down too. Yeah, yeah, I, I think um, Cam is is like a great quarterback. You know, people don't really realize how how big he is. You know, Cam is a very large individual. He's honestly bigger than most linebackers. So you know, when he when he fall when he has the ball and he's falling forward, you know, it's a difficult thing to stop. But you know, what makes him what makes him so so volatile is the fact that you know he touches the ball every single play. You know, so the ball goes to him immediately. So whether or not he's going to run it or whether or not he's going to pass, you know, he still has that opportunity to make a play, you know, every single every single play, you know. So you, it's just one of those things where you just have to make sure that, you know, everybody knows their job and everybody's on their P's and Q's, you know, every play because, you know, he's he's an intelligent quarterback. You know, it's not just like at, throughout his career, you know, you you kind of seen him progress, you know, and I feel like that has a lot to do with his, his completion percentage, you know, is that he's gotten a lot smarter. So, you know, it's easier to read. He's he's reading defenses quicker. You know, he's reading, you know, zones quicker and being able to pinpoint, okay, this is where I need to go with the ball before the snap. You know, so just kind of that elevation in his game is really just taking it to a whole other level. And I feel like the way to stop that is just to, you know, well, not really stop it, but the way to contain it, you know, it's hard to say to stop somebody, but the way to contain it is just everybody being on the same page, you know, everybody knowing what it is that they have to do and just making sure that you do it every single play, you know, and, and every time you, we get a chance to hit the quarterback, you know, we got to make sure we, we do it with full force, you know, especially with, especially with Cam, you know, because he's a, he's a large player. So, and I feel like uh, the refs are, aren't as, uh, aren't as tough when it comes to like the rough and the passer calls and different things like that when it comes to Cam. So we, I feel like we might need to take a little advantage of that, you know, cause he, cause he's so big, they feel like, you know, he can take it. So as, as much as we can, we need to put a punishment on his body. That's great hearing it come from you saying that because <laughs> we're always yeah. we're always complaining about the refs and we're always talking about like the zebras you know they're not throwing the flags uh, for for Big Ben but I think Cam is just in the same kind of a ballpark like there like yeah he, I, I think he gets hit unfairly and doesn't draw the same kind of flags too we'll see what happens that was something we, we you know we discussed that with Joe Flacco getting rid of the football and uh, just making him uncomfortable getting some hands in his face and and things like that. 
that and that definitely worked to the Steelers' benefit. Believe it or not, Cam has only been sacked 12 times in eight games this season. They've they've had their bye week as well. So uh, compared to Big Ben, that's only one more sack. Ben's been sacked 11 times. Now, uh, Cam has had 15 touchdown passes, which is also that's one less than Ben's 16, but he's added four rushing touchdowns on the ground. We talked about the 67.3 completion percentage rate. Part of that is because he has a uh, gentleman in the name of Devin Funches, who is 6'4", mm-hmm. 236, large target. We've talked about in the past whether or not to have Joe Hayden or someone shadow one of these larger guys. Would you put Devin Funches in that same kind of category as a, as a weapon, as a an A.J. Green or Julio Jones, or is he quite not there yet, or does the size difference really matter and you have Joe follow him around the field? I think I think that he is he is a great a good receiver. You know, he's a big receiver, but I don't think he he deserves that much uh that much attention when it comes to cuz when you, when you do something like that as a defense, you know, you kind of change the entire defense. You know, rules have to change, you know, because you know, you have somebody traveling throughout the defense instead of, you know, being set on a different side. So, you know, there's so much more that goes on behind, you know, having somebody shadow him that I don't think it's it's worth everything else because, you know, then you might have to confuse the linebackers. And now now Cam's running up the middle just because, you know, Joe's on the other side of the field in order to, to cover Devin Funches or whatever the case may be. You know, it just it just kind of messes up the defense. And I don't, I don't think that, you know, he he deserves that much. But, you know, he's definitely a great receiver just based off the simple fact that he's so large. You know, he has – his catch radius, is, catch radius is enormous. You know, Cam just really has to put the ball around him, and he's gonna gonna go get it. And um, I feel like it's not gonna be you know easy, but I definitely think that we could do it. I don't think it's you know he's he's not the best receiver in the league, but you know he's he's definitely not no scrub. So you just got to be on your on your p's and q's. Not a scrub. That's like the <laughs> opposite of like when we're talking about guys being grown ass men. So it's <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, before I, I'm going to touch on something else too with the whole cornerback thing, but just uh, j- jumping back to our sponsor at Game Day Tailgate Experience, I want to remind folks that they have flexed the Jacksonville Jaguars game that will be played after this kind of miniature buy since the Steelers have the short week. Then they travel down to Florida, and if you're doing so as well, the game is now at 1 o'clock, which means the tailgate party starts at 9, four hours, all you can eat, and an open bar. Uh, you can look for tickets there. In in, uh, uh, over at steelcityunderground.com slash Jaguars tailgate and use the promo code Steel City when you check out for 20% off your ticket. Now, Trey, your forte, as I always mention, aside from running fast, which you're, you're getting yourself back up to speed there, uh, <laughs> confidence at the cornerback level. Because, you know what, I, I think we've talked about this once before, but now we've seen um, – one of your colleagues, Artie Burns, former first round pick, he is no he's now uh, no longer the starter. He hasn't played the last two games. It looks like Cody Sensabaugh has taken over that role. And, you know, it looks like Cody's playing with confidence and that may be something like what's the kind of mental mind game when you're a corner where You know, maybe you're even in position, but you might not make that play, and then you might not make that play, and you have like a mistake or a mistake, it starts to pile up. How much of that like eats away at you mentally, where it just it kind of gets in the way? You you almost need to take like take like a break. It might actually be good to, in this case, for Artie, who's very talented, very what do you want to say, very uh, physically gifted athlete, to just kind of like. I don't know. I, I want to say take a pause, take a breather, and try and regroup. I, it kind of reminds me of like if you're getting bad quarterback play. We just saw this with Tampa Bay, actually, where Jameis Winston uh, was benched and they put uh, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick in there. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm just wondering because that's like, and also with kickers too. You know, they start it starts to get in there, and uh, you got to wonder how much of this game is is mental versus even just the physical tools, especially at the cornerback position. Uh, it's definitely a mental battle. It's a mental grind in every aspect of football, really. But you know, specifically when it comes to to playing the cornerback position, and it's definitely you know, ment- your mental toughness is something that's going to be challenged. You know, every every day, especially you know how you mentioned uh, you know, kind of being in, when you're in the right position, but like, you know, you just kind of you barely miss the play, or like you you just got a fingertip on it, but the receiver still catches the ball, you know, or whatever. 
whatever it is, you know, those plays definitely definitely take a toll on you. But you, the only thing is that like you just got to learn to to not let it take a toll on you for too long. You know, you get well, I don't know like five seconds to really pout about it, and then after that, you know, you got to go, you got to you got to move on to the next play. Because you know, if you're if you're sitting there thinking about you know this last play that you messed up on, you know, you're gonna mess up again because you're not you're not fully focused and fully locked in on what's happening, you know, next and what's happening in front of you. So, you know, really just the the idea is just to kind of keep the, keep your eyes ahead of you, you know, your mind ahead of you, just always, you know, be thinking about the future. Like even when you make, well, I mean, I guess when you make, when you make a good play, you know, you kind of, you'd like to kind of think about that more because that gives you a motivation to kind of make it again. But, you know, when it comes to making bad plays, you just want to completely forget about them, you know, just, just move on. You know, like I, like I said with the spaceship analogy, you know, they, Spaceships don't have rearview mirrors. They just they just get up out of here and then they don't worry about what's going on behind them. So you just gotta, you know, kind of have the same mentality. You just gotta, whatever happened in the past is in the past. You can't do anything about it. You know, it's not like you can go back and change it. So all you can do is just focus on the future and try and change that. Yeah, I I agree with you on that. The spaceship one is something that I would put in my toolbox as a player because, like you said, you know what, forty second play clock. Some you know these it it runs quick sometimes just set a 25 and start and and you got to go and uh, i think a lot of things like one of the things i watch uh when i'm watching a game even on tv what some people don't realize is is that the quarterbacks have a radio in their helmet and Mm -hmm. and it shuts off at like 15 seconds so if they don't get the calls and it's loud it's a lot of times why you see uh timeouts and stuff like that uh called and i think that's going to be important some of the crowd noise at heinz field hopefully the steelers have that advantage again and of course, that crowd noise is going to get, that gets in your head. It's it's another mental Absolutely. aspect. Absolutely. So you know what? That's a good question for you. Yeah. How much to do? You know, when you're on this drives me crazy. Like I watch a game, like the game in Baltimore. They always show there's Steelers nations everywhere, and people yeah. are, are waving the terrible towels and stuff in the stands. And I'm like, sit down, shut up. We have the football. Ben's trying to <laughs> you know make some calls at the yeah. line. You got the silent count there with Ramon Foster. Uh, sometimes you know he taps uh, Pouncey to snap the ball and it's like come on don't add to the crowd noise but on the defensive side man what's it like to have like the crowd like does the crowd give you like a boost like you're saying that like you know you you, you get some momentum when you have like a good play yeah, versus a def- bad play you definitely do first of all we got like some of the greatest fans in in football you know that's something that i realized it, it's still the fans everywhere like i run into still the fans all the time like down here in tampa and I'm just like, yo, this is like weird. Like we're what three, four states away from <laughs> from Pennsylvania. You know, like what are you even three, doing? Three, four, down here, like but... sixteen hour drive or yeah, something like yeah. that. You know, depending on how fast you drive, of course. So. Uh, yeah, but I don't know, man. Steeler fans just they're great and they travel great. But it's it's definitely something that you can get a thrill off of. You know, I kind of I kind of look at it as like the band in like your high school. You know, when when your band used to play like I don't know your fight song or whatever, like cranked up beat it was you know you kind of you just kind of get that extra energy that extra boost and especially you know after you make a big play and you hear the crowd just kind of go crazy and you just you just know that those people are behind you it definitely does give you like more motivation to go out there and make a play but you know on the opposite side of that you know like playing playing in an away game and you know you kind of you can kind of start to feel the momentum shift from the crowd too you know the crowd the crowd kind of tells a story throughout the game you know you can really tell like momentum is is something that once it's going, it really can't be stopped. And once you feel it kind of happening to you in the negative sense, it's something that also affects you because you're just kind of like, dang, like they're putting this drive together on us, but like we can't do anything to stop it, you know? So that that's also a way that it can be demoralizing. I feel like that's something that, that can happen in Heinz Field, you know, especially if, if you know, Big Ben starts to kind of hit hit all his targets and, you know, James is, is just kind of going off, you know, we could definitely demoralize the whole Panther defense just by – you know, our offense just not only driving down the field, but the crowd getting behind the offense driving down the field, you know, and it just makes it, it just makes it, you know, that, that much worse, you know? So it's the crowd, the crowd noise is definitely something that affects the game. And it's something that, you know, some of us pay attention to, you know, you can see some defenders just kind of out there just, you know, waving their hands up, trying to get their crowd pumped up. You know, it's definitely something that like we feed into, you know, energy is something that's contagious. Yeah, definitely. It kind of reminds me of like Hulk Hogan or somebody like hulking up, uh, feeding off of the crowd, and you could definitely uh, get that sense, especially yeah. like you know third down stands, <laughs> goal line stands. Oh and, and man, after on a third, sack, <laughs> well, especially on third down because third down is the money down. You know, if you if you make a play on third down, then you get you get to go off the field. You know, so when you start kind of hearing the crowd, it's, 
I like it the most, you know, when the crowd just kind of kind of does it for you. You know, when you just – you don't – maybe you don't realize it's third down yet, and then all of a sudden you hear the crowd just kind of start going – getting a little, like, a little louder, and then you look at the sticks, and you're like, oh, man, it's third down. Like, it's the money down. Like, I got to make a play. You know, it's just – I don't know, man. It's just a great feeling. I'm getting kind of amped up just thinking about it. <laughs> Contain yourself, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> you're gonna go it's out and crazy. Hit, you're gonna go out and hit somebody and get fined. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I'm about to run through. I'm about to go run through a door. <laughs> <laughs> we got a few. We got a few. Uh, a few other Panthers to talk about here too. I mean, Mike Tomlin really had a lot of. Um, positive like re- real respect uh, during his press conference for the Carolina Panthers I mean you got to too because they're doing a lot of similar things they're a two loss team just like the Steelers uh, points for 27 and a half per game the Steelers at 28.4 uh, less than a point per game separating them there and points given up or against 22 and a half just one point less for the Panthers than the Steelers at 23.5 uh, defensively yards given up this is interesting 34 34- 344.8 to 347.9, uh, 3, 3.1 yards. I mean, they're so very similar in so many yeah, ways. That's, uh, that's I, kind of crazy. Yeah, it really is. And then you got, like, you know, Ron Rivera, obviously, a defensive-minded coach as well. Uh, but before I jump over to the other side of the ball with the Steelers' offense, there's one more player that is a threat that's <laughs> on the field now for the Panthers, tight end Greg that's Olson. Yeah. Yep. You always got to worry about him, you know, especially, especially, you know, somebody like him because he's a veteran, you know, so he's been around the game for a very long time. So he's one of those players where like he, sometimes I feel like there might not even be a play called. It's just kind of like, yo, Greg, just go get open and the cam, you know, just finds him. So I, he's somebody that we definitely got have to worry about, you know, and them coming out of the tight end position, that's like kind of how I said, you know, a few weeks ago, it's just like difficult to kind of, to kind of guard because they can come from everywhere and they come from like different angles. You know, he could, he could start off in the backfield. He can start off in the wing position. He can start off, you know, actually on the line at tight end, you know, some with Greg Olson, they sometimes even split them out. He can go into the slot literally in every position, you know, he can, he can come out and make a play. So that's, that's another thing that we definitely have to have to think about. Yeah, most certainly. Here's an interesting stat about Greg Olson, too, that you know some people may be listening and it doesn't jump off of the page, especially if you're not like a fantasy football type as well. Um, Greg Olson, since 2011, is only one of three NFL tight ends with 450 receptions uh, or, or more and uh, 5,500 5, receiving yards or more, joining Jimmy Graham and Rob Gronkowski, so in very good company there. Yeah. Um, so he's definitely a threat. Now, speaking of threats, the Steelers have a number of them on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, they're going to have to look out for a few guys like Luke Keekley. Uh Mario Addison, ridiculous. Three sacks and a forced fumble last week. He now leads uh, the Panthers with seven and a half sacks, a half sack more than uh, T.J. Watt, who leads the Steelers. Um, I'm looking at – I'm trying to figure out a Steelers game plan here myself because I think it definitely revolves around just – keep James Conner involved needs at least 20 touches or so because uh, I mean you can't really how do you game plan uh, this is something that's been asked of Mike Tomlin and and everybody keeps asking this they ask James Conner they ask uh, Ben Roethlisberger they ask all these guys so I'll ask you the same thing or you know or teams game planning for James Conner I think it's more or less it's uh, it's like what you talk about defensively you don't want to change your game plan you don't want to weaken uh, multiple posi- positions by making an adjustment at one. Like, for example, mm-hmm. Joe Hayden. We I think we discussed last year like whether or not you can move somebody like a TJ Watt to Ryan Shazier spot when Ryan Shazier was hurt. Uh, and it's like, well, no, then you end up not only maybe you're weak at inside linebacker still because TJ's not an inside linebacker, but then you hurt the outside linebacker position. Mm-hmm. So uh, what it is you do there in game planning to stop the Steelers, what do the Panthers do? I, I assume that nobody's like just ignoring James Connor and what he's been able to do, but at the same time, it's like uh, you got to pick your poison as to which weapon you take away uh, in limiting the Steelers' offense. Yeah, I feel like um, I definitely know that they're going to have to stop the run. I think that the the Panthers' defense is very well rounded. I think that's they really don't get a lot of credit for that, especially their linebackers. Man, they have you know some of the best linebacker core in the in the, in the NFL. You know, we Luke Keegley, You know, he's he's a Pro Bowler. Thomas Davis. You know, he's a, he's been a veteran. He's been a Pro Bowler. You know, you got Shaq Lawson. Who, you know, he's he's another guy who's not a scrub. So, you know, they definitely got some nice linebackers. And really, I feel like 
with them, they're definitely going to have the game plan against James because, you know, you, you'd you be stupid not to. You know, he's he's been freaking balling, you know, this this whole month, really this whole season. So, you know, you definitely got a got a game plan against that. I think that, you know, for the Steelers, I, well, for us, I feel like what we have to do is just kind of attack their secondary. Their secondary is somewhat young. You know, and we have obviously pure veterans, you know, on the when on our side of the field when it comes to receivers. So I think that, you know, we definitely need a heavy dose of A B also, you know, but the the game plan still starts with James Conner, I feel like, you know, because you have to establish a run, you know, in every in any and every game. You know, if there if there is no established run, there is no play action, there is no, you know, just dropping back and, and kinda kinda throwing the ball because if if the defense knows that you're not going to run the ball, they're just going to put their pass runs in and, and they're getting after the quarterback every play, you know? So I definitely do know that we're going to go out there and we're going to have to establish the run. And then, you know, I feel like attacking, attacking the secondary is the, is going to be their weak is going to be the Panthers weak point. You know, yeah, they have Eric Reed back there at the safety now, you know, so that's their, that's their veteran uh, mindset back there. But, you know, when you're out there on that corner and you're out there all alone, you know, you really, you know, Eric's not going to be there to help, you know, if he, if he runs like a curl route or something like that. So, you know, I feel like attacking the secondary is the way to go for for us. Yeah, that sounds good, too. And uh, I kind of wanted to cover – because it's just like it's so easy to just talk offense. you got Antonio Brown. you got Ben, like, on pace to maybe hit 5,000 yards. You've got Juju. You've got Vance McDonald. you got James Conner. you got all of these uh, – you even got James Washington uh, who's starting to get integrated into the offense. Mm-hmm. And Jalen Samuels is getting some snaps. Uh, Terry and myself discussed on a WTF show on the previous podcast, too, just the fact that they didn't play Rosie Nix or uh, – Chuck's core for um, in in the previous game at Baltimore, and you know, I think I don't know if that's necessarily by design. It's maybe of necessity, but those guys are fresh and healthy uh, Thursday night. I mean, they literally didn't play, so they don't have any you know battle wounds or scars, so to speak. These mm-hmm. games usually don't favor the road team. Uh, so Carolina coming in, almost every road team just it's just not good for Thursday night football or the product. The game here listed right now at an over under 52, so a little higher than what they thought with the Ravens. I think this one could go, could hit the 52 or, or go higher possibly, possibly. Uh, do you see it as maybe a tight game? I see the Steelers at uh, their favorite, so they're minus four here. Uh, do you see it like a tight game like the Ravens were? Do you see something like, you know, I don't know if you recall last year where Tennessee came into town and they just got the doors blown off of them in that game? It was it was over <clears> early. <throat> I don't know about over early, but I could see the Steelers maybe having a double-digit lead at the end of this. I definitely, I, I, I always say I'm the homer and I go, go with the Steelers, but even more so uh, on Thursday night. If they were traveling, then I wouldn't feel as good about it, but I feel great about it because it just seems like there's just not enough rest or maybe even preparation and rest for that team that has to travel for the Thursday night game. Yeah, uh, traveling, you know, different. A lot of people really don't don't uh, take that into account, but that stuff like that does actually take a toll on your body. You know, you're crammed up on a plane or whatever it is, the case may be. But I do actually think it's going to be a very close game. You know, there's so many similarities between between these two teams, you know, just like not only the statistics. I didn't realize that the statistics were that close. You know, I kind of <laughs> – I saw it in like the gameplay or whatever, but I didn't know like numerically it was really that close. So that part actually was kind of astonishing. But I do think that is going to be a, a very close game. I, I obviously think it's still just we're still going to win, but I say I don't know probably like a like a twenty high twenties twenty nine to like I don't know twenty four something like that. I think they could get. I think they could get the. Th- 30. I don't know how much more than 30. So I was pretty close. Well, of course, I say that. I go under. It's like the price is right. Uh, <laughs> I didn't yeah, yeah. go over. I don't know about the over 30, man. It's tough because I'm i with you. 28, 29, 30, 31. I'm in that same range again. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. could have happened. You know what else I wanted to talk about, too? Another similarity. I mean, I just saw this just on paper just the same way you did. And when I pulled up the stats, I was like, everybody says, oh, you're a stats guy. Well, I just read them off and then I go, oh, 
geez, that's really close. You know what I mean? Except yeah. for except for offense. I mean, the Steelers four fifteen point three to thirty seven points uh thirty three hundred seventy one point six. Let me say that again. Four hundred and fifteen yards roughly to three hundred and seventy one yards. Steelers much more explosive offensively, but sometimes that's just a you know, that's a byproduct of getting short fields or long fields too. So I try not to mm-hmm. take that too much into account. But the specialists, the kickers, I mean you got Chris Boswell and Graham Gano, they were both Pro Bowl kickers last year. Uh, Graham Gano has missed two point after attempts. I mean, it's not just he's twenty one to twenty three. Boswell's twenty two to twenty six. Surprisingly, seven to ten on field goals. Where Gano is eleven of eleven. Uh, Boswell has not tried a kick of fifty plus yards yet this year, and I don't know if Mike Tomlin will put him out there in Heinz Field on Thursday and have him try that. We talked about pressure and things like that, but once again, something that's very similar, just in the in the place kicking game there. Um, yeah, um, like uh, like you just said, with pressure, you know, my my dad actually. Well, I don't, I don't think my dad created the quote, but you know, my dad was the person that I heard say it, but. It's either pressure is either going to make a diamond or it's going to burst a pipe, you know. So, you know, people react to pressure in different ways. I definitely think that Boswell is one of those people that, you know, if he, if we're if he's put in a situation to where, you know, we needed him to make a 50-yarder for the game winner or whatever it is, I definitely think he's somebody who, could, who can step up to, you know, like you said, he's, a, he's an all-pro kicker. So, you know, he knows what he's doing. So, I definitely didn't notice that the similarities were like that, you know, obviously on paper, but. I don't know, man. The kicking game is something that, you know, we, 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 I feel like we started to take for granted, you know, especially, you know, that they moved this, uh, the extra point back, you know, ever since that rule changed, you know, you kind of start to realize that, you know, kicker, kicking isn't something that's just so easy and it's not automatic every, every single time anymore. So, you know, if they, especially with, with, uh, Gano missing those extra points, you know, that's something that could, that could potentially come up super big, you know, if he misses an extra point, you know, and, if it's a if it's a back and forth game, you know where you know Cam is putting a touchdown dr- touchdown drive together and Ben's putting a touchdown drive together, and they're just going back and forth, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you miss a field goal. That's that's a loss, even if you're going back and forth. You know, you're still going to lose by one point just because you missed that field goal. So it's something that you should definitely take into account, you know. And I I feel like Coach Coach Smith is definitely going to probably end up coming after the after the kicker in some type of way, you know. Especially if they're like on the right hash or something like that, bringing bringing Joe or whoever it is off the edge, is just trying trying to get that block in on the on the end or or push it to out to the side. Yeah, agreed all the way around. Um, I can't I can't wait to see it. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Color rush jerseys are going to be out. I mean, it seems like they always got something special going on in one of these games. They just had the throwback jerseys uh, with the Cleveland Browns uh, the a week and a half ago, and then of course Baltimore tried to get fancy and brought out busted out those black jerseys, but that didn't work out so well for them. They were nice jerseys, though. Uh, you know what, man? I'm not. I, I hate I hate to give them any any kind of props. It, it kind of makes me throw up in my mouth a little bit. But but they were they were kind of cool. I, I have to admit, uh, you know, they were trying. They were trying to get the, you know the same thing, trying to get the crowd into it. So mm-hmm. um, definitely, uh, if you're headed down to Heinz Field Thursday, make sure you're going to scream your head off. It's also going to be the salute to service. Uh, portion of those festivities for um, for the Steelers because there's usually at least the one home game where they do the salute to service stuff. I don't really know what they have lined up, but uh, I believe you had said your your father was a military guy, right? Yeah, so- I, was, I was just about to make a comment towards that, man. I definitely, you know, appreciate different things like that. And and, and for if you guys do you go to the game or whatever, you know, make sure you show your respects. If you, you know, see somebody out there, I'm sure they're probably going to have, you know, veterans stand up or something like that. So, you know, make sure, you know, you just kind of thank them or, and different things like that. You know, coming from coming from a kid who, you know, my dad used to get deployed and stuff when I was younger. It wasn't it wasn't it's not an easy thing on your family, you know, so, you know, it, they're probably going to be there with their family. So, you know, make sure you just kind of give them that respect and, you know, tell them thank you for for their service and what, what it is that they're doing, because it's not easy. Yeah, absolutely, and that's also coming from I have several veterans within my own family as well, so uh, that's it's always something that hits close to home for myself. 
And you may even see some of the camo things out there as kind of a homage to, you know, the whole Salute the Service campaign. And if you hadn't seen it and you're um, one of the folks that are out, like, doing all the tweeting and stuff like that, use the hashtag Salute the Service at some point uh, during this because the NFL is matching, I think, something like $5 for every hashtag or something. It, it's something in that ballpark. So uh, definitely take a look at that for sure. And uh, for those who may have missed I and Agle and his play-by-play. This is a game with the Fox broadcast crew of Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, but you catch catch Ian over, I believe, on the Westwood One radio feed. However, no Dan Fouts, so I just had to throw that in there from from, from our previous <laughs> from our previous show. We were like it was like constantly the same broadcast crew with Dan Fouts. Now he finally gets somebody different for those of you watching at home, uh, and for those of you listening. Once again, thank you for listening uh, to myself and Trey. And uh, Trey, once again, thanks for taking your time out of your busy schedule to join us here for another Trey's Corner. Yeah, man. It's no problem at all, man. I love doing this thing. I'm looking forward <laughs> looking forward to next week. Glad we had a, another great podcast, you know, and I can't wait to, to the people here, you know. Yeah, but you know what? I got to give you the props, though, because you know what? It's like, you know, most people... It, this even though we enjoy doing this it's not the easiest thing either trust me it's like i don't think people realize that we like have no cuts when we do this there's very there's like no no editing we're just talking straight through like we're just two guys sitting down uh you know at a bar or anywhere in in, in a restaurant booth or on the phone or something just talking football you know and uh yeah with, that's, with some that's, notes <laughs> that's definitely what it is and i i feel like that's what makes it so good you know because it's something that's genuine yeah. You know, I, I, I actually enjoy doing this. You know, I love the game of football. I've been playing it my entire life, you know, so I can literally talk about it all day. So, you know, it's not a problem at all for me to do it. And I'm just – I'm happy that you feel the same way too. And, and I'm happy that, you know, most Americans feel the same way. You know, football is an amazing game and, and it brings people together like no no other thing. What was it? Baseball is America's pastime. Basketball is America's game, and football is America's passion. I believe I read yeah, that man. a long time ago somewhere. I cannot even give credit to. So, but yes, <laughs> one, yes. Thank you to all of our listeners. Thank you everyone for subscribing once again. Uh, my name is Joe Kuzma. This is Trey Johnson, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers cornerback. Trey's corner. Until next time. Um, oh, don't forget, we have all of the fan line stuff. You're going to hear that in a second. If you go. Uh, into our show notes for the podcast whether you're on YouTube, over on the website, iTunes, etc. You'll see the hotline number there, 203 scu or fan mail at steelcityunderground.com uh, Send us some stuff and uh, we'll cover it here on a future edition of Trey's Corner. Till next time, my name's Joe, his name's Trey. Be safe, be good, we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website www.steelcityunderground.com